qualifying is when we see racing cars at their very best. Low fuel, fresh tyres, everything turned up to 11 and drivers at flat chat. This is a short view back to the past on Formula 1's greatest qualifying laps. Gentlemen, a short view back to the past. Using practice times to set the grid for a Grand Prix has been around since the 1933 Monaco Grand Prix, but its importance has changed over time. In the early days, before we had short braking distances, dirty air, wings that produced downforce and all sorts of problems that go with it, overtaking was easier. We also used to have 3-2-3 three, three, or even 4-3-4 four, four grids, so getting a place on the front row wasn't quite as crucial as it is today. To pick out the best qualifying laps, therefore, I think we need to be looking at the 1970s onwards. That, of course, doesn't mean that there weren't some fantastic performances before that. Eugenio Castellotti's pole at the 1955 Belgian Grand Prix, for example, deserves recognition. It was only his third World Championship race, and he pipped the Mercedes duo Juan Manuel Fangio and Sterling Moss to pole position, which was quite a surprise result, even if the Lancia D50 was, in fact, a very impressive piece of kit. There have also been some fantastic wet weather qualifying performances. Think Rubens Barrichello at Spa in 1994, for example. But really, qualifying should be about getting everything to the absolute maximum in the dry. So we're just looking at dry sessions for this list. In the previous video, we looked at Nigel Mansell's 1992 British GP qualifying, which has the record for the biggest margin as a percentage of the lap over the opposition. It's definitely a contender, but that's all we're gonna talk about it now. We've done that before. Let's look at some other candidates. If we're talking about Silverstone, we have to mention Keke Rosberg's fantastic lap in 1985. He averaged 160.9 miles an hour, which was an F1 record for a couple of decades, and it was a second quicker than Mansell managed in the sister car. He also finished the lap with a slow puncture, so bravery certainly pictured there. And that's a big point about the turbo era. It was bravery and the drivers guessing what they could get away with. The difference between race pace or practice pace and qualifying was enormous when they turned the boost up. So these laps, they were impressive, but they probably weren't optimised in the car. In recent times, Lewis Hamilton's performances at Spa in 2020 and Singapore in 2018 really stand out. The latter, he lapped half a second faster than even Mercedes thought he could go. Max Verstappen came within a corner of probably doing a similar lap at Saudi Arabia in 2021 before unfortunately hitting the barriers. When talking about finding the last thousandth of a second, which is of course what qualifying is all about, we also have to look at the 2000 Japanese Grand Prix qualifying session, where title rivals Michael Schumacher and Mika Hakkinen kept pushing each other faster and faster. Schumacher ended up taking pole by 0.009 of a second, and the rest of the field were half a second or more further back. Schumacher deserves another mention on two Monaco laps as well. His 1996 pole position in the recalcitrant F310 which somehow picked the Williams to the front of the grid, and 2012, when as a 43-year-old, he showed us a little bit of magic by topping qualifying in the Monaco Grand Prix at Mercedes before, of course, a penalty from a previous race forced him further down the grid. Monaco seems a good place to end up for this contest because its precision and commitment are required to a degree perhaps not seen on any other circuit. Jano Trulli's 2004 pole position, which left even Renault teammate Fernando Alonso gasping, has to get a mention as well, and of course it set it up for his first and only World Championship Grand Prix victory. To win this contest though, maybe we can just err slightly towards the romantic option before data and optimization really kicked in. I can't believe we've got this far through the video before mentioning his name, but Ayrton Senna, of course, has to come into any great qualifying debate. It's one of the absolute fastest Formula One drivers of all time. And his most famous lap, of course, was the 1988 Monaco Grand Prix effort. The way Senna described the lap, almost in a trance-like state, and the fact that he pulled in because he didn't understand what was happening, definitely adds to the legend of that lap. And he did out-qualify teammate Alain Prost by 1.4 seconds. So that's got to be very high up on any qualifying list. But I'd say there's one lap that could even pip Senna at number one. It's a lap that didn't even get pole position, but if getting to 100% of a car's capability when the car is good is one thing, then doing it when the car is bad is quite another. Gilles Villeneuve missed out on pole for the 1981 Monaco Grand Prix by 0.078 of a second to Nelson Piquet's much more agile Brabham. Remember, the 126CK was estimated by Harvey Postlethwaite as having between a quarter and a third of the downforce of the leading runners. It did have a lot of power, but its handling was not fantastic, and you would think Monaco is not the best place for that sort of car. 
Perhaps the most astonishing stat about this lap is that it was 2.478 seconds clear of teammate Didier Peroni. That's even more impressive when you think Peroni was on pole for the Monaco Grand Prix the year before in Elysia. He was no slouch and he was 15 spots lower on the grid. It was a performance of precision and aggression against the odds that set Villeneuve up for a remarkable victory the following day. No car, of course, can be made to go faster than it can around a circuit, but for a physics-troubling performance, Villeneuve's 1981 Monaco qualifying effort has to stand as one of the finest performances in motorsport more than four decades on. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe. And do let us know if there are any laps that you think I've missed in this list. Also head over to Motorsport TV to take a look at some other great motorsport videos.